or they asked me during my uh, interns during my interview at I'll even tell you the entire process. Mm-hmm. I, I joined that startup. Twenty thirty odd people, all youngsters, all from IIT Roorkee. They, I was their first external hire. Mm-hmm. After I came here, uh, and I got into Rivian and everything, and life was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I probably have had a reverse inflection point where I'm not as motivated anymore, and. now i need to get motivated again because i'm not able to find a job or whatever yeah. getting a job here has gotten way more complex and uh, whatever ideas i had they have changed right in right. front of my eyes and i couldn't do anything about it first questions first okay <laughs> how do you get into powerlifting oh wow <laughs> so you was generally curious about that i didn't want to ask it before so because i want to get on record question and uh point number 1 you taking interest in me uh, makes me more interested in doing this so i was very slim and i, I was in college vit mm-hmm. as you know well known mm-hmm. skinny low self esteem uh, there was this dude called david he used to lift a lot and he got me into lifting and he was like a addict gym addict okay. and i just his personality rubbed off on me and then he used to power lift and i knew nothing about it so he taught me all the way from from the step zero onwards he he taught me everything and that's how i got into it but then um, i had a i had a birth condition i had a congenital hernia it's okay. it's in your pelvis region near your testes whatever okay. when i kept on lifting for couple of years it got worse then i had to before i came to us i had to get get it uh, fixed and there was a surgery 14 stitches whatever in the us uh, no no in india okay. before i came here okay. i got all my tests done okay, okay. ever since i have not been deadlifting i cannot be lifting super heavy weights okay. i i used to lift a lot but i did i really miss it but i can't do it anymore did you go to aj yeah i go i went to aj so fitness i yeah. had a, a rather short stint of like one month so what happened is I'd come back from Pondicherry, and I had a similar friend who was into powerlifting. One of like two friends, but one of them is still doing professionally powerlifting. His name is Kunal, and the other friend's name is Amit. So who? Amit, I actually know that guy. Okay, he, yeah, yeah. He's big he, with big shoulders. Yeah, yeah, he was my roommate in Bangalore. Like no way, friends, Amit. Yeah. Amit, the uh, what's his uh, full name? Vikram. Uh, yeah, he so, he's the star of AJ. No, yeah, he yeah. he works on the top floor. Right, right. Uh, Basically, so Amit dragged me to the gym after we came back from a trip in Pondicherry, and then that, that was one month. It was like first day we started that bench squat deadlift, yeah, yeah, yeah. but mine was rather short. It was like one two months, and then uh, fourth year we started for placements, and then it got phased away. And then he had an injury, so he also stopped in like a few years back. So he also stopped. But the other friend Kunal, he is like full time into powerlifting now. So that's his full time. Like he's going pro. And when did you give up coffee? Oh, coffee! Because your website said coffee. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Uh, I'll tell you. So I've been struggling, struggling with this some gastric issues. I drank a lot of coffee and uh, pre-workouts and energy drinks and whatever, uh, and then it eroded my mucus lining in my stomach, mm-hmm. and I've been having so that has resulted in higher acid production, and I've been having acid reflux, all sorts of. problems so doctor said no coffee no no alcohol uh, no alcohol uh, completely cut off alcohol no spices nothing okay. i mean i'm trying to stick to just cocaine that is it i'm just trying to stick to plain uh, plain food uh, so going back to vit going back to the first question did you see more i think everybody has sort of an inflection point mm-hmm. it could be in some people have it in school very late, really people have it in school most people have it in either college or after uh, like working somewhere like getting that first like sort of ab to kuch karna hai life mein so did you see that more do you see more of that in vit or asu when did that sort of inflection point happen for me it was like i think vit ke baad because vit mein i didn't do anything mm-hmm. i went after school i was like now it's all chill ab to college aa gaya i took that parents bolte hai na that iske baad to mazay to uske baad i took that too seriously and i was like ab to kuch nahi karna hai and I feel like I watch too many shows. एक तो मस्ती करना है तो अच्छे से करो लाइक एकदम मतलब लाइक दैट राइट सो वी आई डी डेट यू डू दैट सो इट वॉज लाइक आई हैविंग फन बट द फन वॉज इन वोट दे इट वॉज नॉट लाइक इट्स वॉज लाइक टाइप वन फन जस्ट बेसिक डेकडेंट फन राइट सो आई थिंक आई हैड द इंफ्लेक्शन पॉइंट आफ्टर कॉलेज वैन आई स्टार्ट वर्किंग आई वॉज लाइक ओ ओके ठीक है पैसे कमाने एंड ऑल दैट स्टफ राइट दैट किट इन अ लिटल लेटर सम पीपल हैव इट ड्यूरिंग स्कूल बट 
what was your was it vit was it ac or was it like outside of these yeah two? i don't know how you are asking such good questions bro uh, but the i'll tell you what happened uh, i started dating this girl okay. who's uh, my girlfriend still i dating started dating her 11th standard and i was a complete dumb fuck how do we say uninspired that guy who even the teacher picks on just to make right, the class right, laugh right. you know i was that guy and right. clown class clown uh, just do whatever to gain attention until 10th standard okay uh, i i i all failed all my pre boards uh, stemming from my delusion i still wanted to take science mm-hmm. after failing 10th standard mm-hmm. uh, uh, the school say i i was i went to amity international mayur vihar mm-hmm. right uh, very bougie school did you take a mustang there or no uh no not really but not in my my branch but in amity no idea there are some rich brats okay i had rich people in my school as well but uh not not the mustang types you know vid had one mustang do you uh, yeah i know yeah, that yeah. guy was there for 7 years yes yeah. he, i think he's still there <laughs> oh okay <laughs> yeah he, he's never going to leave but uh I used to go to Amity, and I was a complete dumb guy who just did uninspired, doesn't know what to do. And then I just started dating this girl, and I got serious. I kind of fell in love with her, and then I was like, I'm too slim, I'm too dumb. I score zero marks. <laughs> I'm not even that rich. I I'm a Mr. Nobody, so I just started questioning myself, and then I just sort of got serious. You know, I used to go to uh, this thing called Akash. Uh, oh yeah, 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 thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and then uh, it was a five-hour class, and I used to literally cry. I I had had tears falling off my <laughs> eyes because I was so sleepy. I couldn't understand one one iota of anything. Mm-hmm. And then I just you know confronted my reality and got a bit serious about my life and started studying a lot. And then I uh, I started picking up things twelfth standard onwards. Uh, things started to make sense, and then I scored good marks. People respected me. Right. That fueled my will will to do more. And then I scored decent marks in JE. Like right. whatever I could from whatever syllabus I could cover, mm-hmm. I scored decent. I scored decent in VITs exam as well. Right. Got into VIT because they were giving me uh, IT branch. Okay. Without paying anything extra or anything okay. like that. Um, and then uh, got into vid and that's where i thought that now i have a level playing field with everybody else yes. so i can work hard so mm-hmm. i kept working hard all through vid i joined student communities uh, worked worked a lot they made me president over there vid in a bit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's uh, a, it's a very uh, special place for me right I and i think if you're president uh, you're pretty involved even if you're a board yeah. member you're super involved but yeah. if you're a president you're you, are you the, have to yeah, yeah you're, you're the basic yeah. driving force okay. and it's it, it was not one of those student communities who just chit chatter and you yeah, know okay. do dumb shit uh-huh. we were into actually developing tools there are many tools that we made and i made that are still in use Oh. and i pay like 10 dollars a month to keep them hosted so oh, nice that's where i learned all my dev skills coding skills right. worked a lot in vit had decent marks no one care i don't personally care about cgp and all that right. but your but, inflection point towards tech towards doing better in life was in 12th and then yes. towards tech was like vit first yes. second year okay yes okay. Then, i don't think i had that inflection point in vit even after being surrounded by de- i would say decent people when, once i moved to bangalore once i started working then i was like okay okay this is like i, I was super attached to money i feel more than the tech side of things so it was not not my passion of tech it's like as long as it makes money i'll like what what makes me mo- the most amount of money so but okay uh, i think the inflection point to some extent was also the partner because, yeah, and i think that's yeah. true for i think men in the sense that yeah. the primal thing is bande milni chahiye to so how does that tie to your uh, the app that you made good morning to your oh own. yeah when yeah. when did that happen in the 8 8 year uh, i think that was second year or first year uh, As I told you, oh, I oh VIT or AC VIT. Oh, that was yeah, in, oh, yeah okay. that was in VIT. Um, so has the app been doing your uh, uh, good not mornings? Anymore, not <laughs> anymore. Now, now I live with her, so I just you've, you've yeah. grown up. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, grown up. But I made that in first or second year. In fact, you know what? I know I have too many tangents. Maybe I'm missing out. But I want to take a step back, and I also want to mention that after after I came here. Uh, and i got into revian and everything and life was good mm-hmm. uh, i probably have had in reverse inflection point where i'm not as motivated anymore 
and now I need to get motivated again because I'm not able to find a job or whatever. Uh, but you know, uh, I've been working hard for I would say five years, and I think I'm losing the boost or the enthusiasm a little bit. I think that's partly because of the once you have some safety net, when you had the internship and the co-op, that yeah. that that should happen. I think that is across the board. It's like you don't do those six thousand, not six thousand, sorry, six hundred applications when you're when you have that offer. Versus somebody who does not have that yeah. offer and that fear yeah. will yeah. sort of. Okay, so let's uh, jump to Rivian. How, when did that happen? Was it in the first semester or the second semester? You came in fall 22. just. To, yes, yeah. I came in fall 22 time. and I graduated in uh, 2022 from my bachelor's from VIT. Right. So I came directly. Right. During my time at VIT, I was already into tech. Uh, I know how to code and I know how to develop more than I need, know how to code so the dev person rather than the lead code monkey sort of yeah thing. yeah okay. i would say that but uh, i'm not even uh, i've done a lot of lead code as well okay. but i'm a better developer than a uh, lead coder i would right. say i think lead code is eventually it's a means to an end right yes so, yeah and lead code monkey, lead code calls himself lead code monkey. So it's like, a, I don't mean it as a this thing to anyone who's like into yeah. lead code, but yeah, but yeah, go ahead. I mean, uh, in fact, if I would take, if someone calls me a lead code, lead code monkey, I would take it as a compliment. Compliment, yeah. right. Yeah. So th- I just want to make that clear. <laughs> it's a compliment. I missed out a small, small thing. I, I got offer from my SUN, Carnegie Mellon and uh, TAMU. I got TAMU, okay. Uh, and I applied to UCLA, UC Berkeley. Other than these three, I applied okay. to UCLA, UC Berkeley. You uh, applied to CS everywhere? Yes. Why not take TAMU over? I, I think CMU is it's crazy, it's crazy expensive. expensive. Uh, I didn't take TAMU because TAMU requires you to uh, pay the entire, needs you to show the entire I-20 amount liquid in your bank. Uh, oh, right? They don't, expe- they don't accept any, uh, let's say, stocks or anything that's... Okay semi-liquid or anything like that uh, they wanted me to show them the entire 20 amount and I did not I took a loan IDFC bank okay. and if anybody wants help uh, for about bank uh, loan and all that banking stuff a lot of people want help yeah <laughs> go to go to VMAX scholars they're decent VMAX scholars yeah okay. it's a that. government linked uh, initiative and they really help you a lot Right. Oh, they'll make the process easier for you and it's free it's okay. free CMU was way too expensive it, it was even beyond the limit of my uh, education loan and uh, COVID happened during the last one and a half year of my degree oh, so yeah, I yeah. didn't have to go to college okay. so I went to Bangalore and I, uh, I joined a startup there during my bachelor's itself oh, called Blue okay. Sapling Okay. And uh, it was a very good, I love those people. Okay. Uh, if someone ever watches this, I love you uh, guys. And, uh, Were you doing dev there? Like yeah, com- I was a React Juice developer there. Okay. And uh, React has been my bread and butter ever, ever since I've gotten into this shit, okay. for the most part. But I, I joined that startup, 20, 30 odd people, all youngsters. All from IIT Roorkee. They, I was their first external hire. Mm-hmm. Uh, they all just uh, hired alumni from IIT Roorkee. They took us on vacation, uh, vacation for 15 days in Goa. Complete, uh, you know, good vibe and good work ethic as well. Okay. Uh, good people as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I worked there for a, a year. Okay, the last year basically. Yeah, because I had no more credits. Uh-huh. I finished my credits early in VIT. Okay. And last six months is just... Uh, capstone oh, yeah, or internship yeah, yeah. so, so I you just, did that internship yeah and okay. got my degree and then uh, that's all the experience I had before coming here but it's not regarded anywhere uh, if I graduate in 2022 officially anything that I've worked before then uh, all the recruiters don't regard it as work experience okay. so I'm still a fresh grad even though I've worked right. a bit right then uh, then I when I was in India, I started applying to jobs at ASU, mm-hmm. campus jobs, because I wanted to do this whole thing on my own. I, that's why I took a student loan uh, and uh, I wanted a job mm-hmm. so I can sustain my expenses sure. yeah. for the first year. So I started applying. There's this one guy uh, who t- emails me and says, uh, there is this one software developer opening at Decision it's Theater. Good. And I was like, okay, yeah, let's go. Life is good. I, I'm getting uh, calls as soon as I've not even right. come to US and I and I and I got in a surgery just like a couple of days ago right. 
I still interviewed with them. I wasn't even able to speak properly, but uh, I would like on a low tone. I was able to communicate, but mm-hmm. I wasn't in my full, you know, right. dressed up and ready to bust it out. Right. Nothing like that. So I just hopped on a call with him. He asked me basic questions, which I heard people are cheating for. Mm-hmm. It was literally a JSON object, and I just had to manipulate it and extract information out of it and okay. use a map function to. Okay. Transform okay. it or something like that, right? Yeah. And then he told me that he is my founder's roommate. Founder from Blue Sapling. Yeah, founder from oh. Blue Sapling is roommate of this manager at Blue Sapling. Yeah, oh. that happened, and there was small world experience. <laughs> I it's so you just, had that offer before coming to yeah, oh, pretty much perfect. Okay, and you were there for a year before you started your internship. Yeah, I, I've been part of Decision Theater for almost the whole. Okay, you've been associated yeah, one year. Yeah, together. okay. I wasn't working with them during my eight months at Rivian, eight to right. nine months at Rivian. But other than that, I've been working with them. Now I had one year of experience at a startup, mm-hmm. uh, one year of experience. Uh, working here part time as a sort of Flutter developer, they wanted okay. a Flutter developer, and with all that in my resume, I I applied. I knew the tech skills already, and I had a ton of projects already. Mm-hmm. I'm decent at coding, right. uh, so I I applied a lot, 500, 600 applications, okay. which is not a lot compared to now. Probably right, yeah, I yeah. applied to 5,000 companies right. and still not gotten anything. Yeah. But I applied to 500, 600 that got four or five callbacks. Okay. Uh, Nestle, Rivian, uh, University of Phoenix. Okay. And then uh, there was this coherent health or something like that. Some okay. hospital. Okay. I think, yeah. If- uh, all these four Some, somewhere in work they have done this application yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, internships are the easiest interviews in my right, opinion for sure, for sure, from yeah. my perspective or from my no I think I think that's standpoint that's a fact right? yeah some people might not find it easy because they lack the skills or confidence. No, but as compared to full time, it is easier. Like if you compare Amazon time, internship yeah. versus Amazon full, you can't compare Amazon internship yeah. to somewhere else yeah. full time. Yeah. But Apple to Apple comparison, I think internships are way easier. easier. And the, all they asked me during my uh, interns during my interview, I t- I'll even tell you the entire process. Mm-hmm. Hiring manager called me. Uh, took my basic information, my OPD, CPD, whatever, college, blah, blah, blah. And then hiring manager interview round happened. He just asked me about my projects. Mm-hmm. I showed him. When you have evidence to back up your claims, you right. people get impressed. Right? Right. He was impressed. Then I had my last interview. I had to prepare a presentation uh, of any technical problem I've solved. Mm-hmm. And then it was a panel interview. Two people were on the panel. It was a one hour round. Again, talking about my projects. They had a few follow up or, you know, follow up questions, which were a bit more technical. How did you do this? How did you do that? Just to make sure I actually did what I'm saying. Right. They asked me about what packages I used. Or if there is, let's say, I'm talking about Good Morning Girlfriend. They told me how did I, what package did I use to send emails? How did I maneuver? Uh, Gmails, uh, a spam blockage, etc. Uh, right, okay. just to make sure mm-hmm. I'm I'm talking about what I know, right? right. And not pulling things out of my ass. So right. that's what happened. Simple uh, interview with Rivian. Others were a bit more technical, but nothing out of the world. Right. Very simple up, uh, from my uh, standpoint, right. and that's how I got into Rivian. It was an eight month thing. I had other offers. Most of them were remote. Pay was around 25, Rivian was paying me 40, they were paying me... And it was an 8 month thing beforehand only, yep. like it, because I, I think I saw yep. Rivian's internship, yep. it's like a yep. internship plus Yep, cool. it was okay. an 8 month... Ad. So it started in June? Uh, June until December. Okay. Uh, not so even June, May. May until May December. December, okay, got it. And... Uh, uh, and you were based out of there for those eight months, right? No. So I was there for the summer, but then ASU doesn't allow you to... Oh, but they gave you remote, right? They had to, yeah. Okay. Even though it was not a remote position, my manager stepped in for me, vouched for me. Okay. Uh, talked with the HR, talked with the right. management. And, oh, yeah. But I don't... ASU is very shitty in this aspect. Right. Yeah. I believe that they should let people... Uh, yeah, a lot of internships are falling through. Like yeah. Tesla, industrial folks generally, if they have a chance with Tesla and... Yeah. Uh, so, and Tesla internships are obviously non-remote, like yeah. none of them are remote and they will not give you remote. So, and more important than that, I think tech can still be done remotely, industrial construction, all of these cannot be done. So they have no shot at like spring or fall 
unless it's based out of phoenix so i think that's that's an issue that's definitely an issue because summers a lot of companies do convert to spring it is difficult to get like a fall co-op directly but if you're doing a summer it's in their best interest to sort of yeah, convert you but yeah, then yeah. yeah if you will cut uh, your legs yeah. i don't know why they do it so your lead code prep and all did it ever so for me i think i gave around i had seven initial round screenings and one of these include like a, just a call to say that we don't sponsor visa so the first one i was putting no so i'm including that also as a call back because it did go okay. through the next round and then okay. it fell off so out of those uh I think I solved one lead code question that is two sum which is the first oh, lead code. Oh yeah. So <laughs> I was like ah and I I did uh, and I didn't do a lot I probably was at a 100 150 level like the basic blind 75 and stuff. But a lot of that was I don't want to call it waste but I basically solved just two sum. So did you have did you have the lead code grind in any of these or no? No, no none okay. of them. Okay. Uh I had one interview where uh, they had me uh, pseudo code a music player api mm-hmm. uh, this was anzis i forgot to mention okay. this company anzis they offered me i got an offer from them But i think looking back i made a mistake joining rivian i joined rivian because it was more i didn't look at it long term uh if i would have joined i worked a lot at rivian i was in person i one week one week i i, I logged in i think 82 hours Uh, yeah the work work culture at Rivian is very startup ish mm. uh they work very hard they're very unorganized mm-hmm. uh, it's a new car company you know they it takes a lot of time to mature right. the car company that is why only tesla and ford are the only profitable car mm. companies in the history of american okay. auto auto industry uh, so yeah rivian is Uh, very very hardcore especially my t- my team usually they hire uh, uh mechanical engineers or uh industrial engineers all those guys the the software i was working in the factory in normal and th- there was a very focused software team i was part of it uh, we had insane work as i learned a lot yeah so if i would have joined let's say ansys it's a s&p 500 company mm-hmm. uh it was remote Twenty five dollars an hour. Uh, do the summer. They'll probably extend it. It'll be a stable company. They'll have positions to offer. Rivian is right. struggling yeah. at the moment, yeah. even though its stock is on the rise right. currently. But it has a huge mountain to climb right. if it wants if it wants to survive. Right. So uh, they are cutting costs. They are only need to do basis operations, okay. right? So. Yeah, uh, even though my manager loved me, uh, my mentor loved me. I still talk to them. My, I still talk to my mentor. He vouches for me every day. Uh, he still can't offer me a job because he his team is not getting the yeah uh, budget yep. for the year, right? So yeah, just it's all about always making most money. Uh, Correct. Yeah. But if I would go back in time, I would still choose Rivian again because. I whatever work I did, I had huge impact. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was not a, you know, usually internships are like just you getting introduced to the yeah, company, yeah. especially it's a training. Yeah, yeah, especially if it's a two to three month long mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. But if you get a job, then it's the smarter thing to do. It, it it is just stupid of me to say that I have worked nine months, worked so hard. Right. I was usually clocking in. Sixty plus hours a week okay. on average, okay. and I still didn't get a job. So I think yeah. I'm stupid, and uh, is is not even just make the smart choice in that yeah. aspect. You know, go for think long term and uh, take us if you have multiple offers. Right. Yeah, because I think a, there's a sponsorship element to it as well. Like in this case, you yeah. there was a budget issue, and there was the overall. I mean, this wouldn't even. Like this would also affect someone who's who does not have sponsorship issues, but then there would be cases where, the, for example, you get a stellar internship, let's say at JPMC or somewhere, but then turns out later that they don't sponsor for this particular role and whatnot. So then you have to sort of think along those lines as yeah. well. That yeah. uh, and that sort of prevents us, like international talent, from getting into a lot of early age, like seed, yeah. especially yeah. seed stage yeah. or uh, Series A startups. because most of them do not have the bandwidth to go through that process even and they don't care yeah they can get 
so essentially we'd have to join like a mid we are restricted to the mid or we are mid- restricted to a set of 500 companies yeah, i would yeah, say yeah, at yeah. max yeah uh, that's the that's a pool uh, how many incoming students 3 lakh uh 1.3 1.3 1.3 this this year i have to check but okay. expect it to go up so we all of us are competing for no, it's just from know. india so there's international talent yeah. from other so countries so we are screwed basically yeah. even though i worked two years part time as a software developer at decision theater uh, nine months internship at rivian after that i worked once i uh, rivian ended i started working as a data analyst with uh st- uh, professor called Stephanie Lindquist okay uh, she's she's a founding professor of uh the law school here in ASU i started working as a data analyst so i worked six last semester with her and then uh, she hired me as a contractor uh, at ASU for the last two months okay. which and that employment ended on 30th of june so okay. ever since 30th of june i have been completely unemployed okay. and i'm and i started my job search in december Right. And it started off great. I, I got a call within the first ten days from Tesla. Okay. But then Tesla, Tesla laid off yeah, yeah. thousands of people. Yeah. They laid off the recruiter I was talking yeah. to. <laughs> uh, and then I have had a few stints here and there. Nothing is. I give one interview, mm-hmm. nine rounds with Rivian, mm-hmm. where my mentor, who is a very influential person in the company, he basically runs the plant. Mm-hmm. One aspect of the of the plant i would say uh he's a very influential guy has a lot of notoriety and he recommended me because he was my mentor and i got a chance to work with him uh and that's how i got a call and then they took nine rounds hr round even the hr round was a great filter filter barrier whatever okay. uh tested my knowledge about the company but i knew already because i interned there right. and it was a in person position in normal where i had stayed for 9 months whatever okay right even when i was in asu during after my summer break i know i'm switching timelines i'm sorry but yeah, no. i used to travel back and forth the company would sponsor right, everything right. i would rent a car right. have fun go visit chicago as well right had a good time then but uh, I, so what i'm trying to say is i stayed in normal a lot right right so i i could answer the manager uh, uh, sorry the hr conveniently right. then i met with the hiring manager right she she had a one hour conversation with me talked me talked to me it was not technical completely wanted to know my previous experiences uh, how i what's the project what are the problem they're trying to solve etc then i then i the next round was with the team lead uh, team lead was a guy in california uh, head of ai that was his title very very sweet dude mm-hmm. very very like the tech bro of silicon valley kind right. of a guy you know yeah. uh, he's that guy i talked to him another one hour call he had a list of 35 questions which were which were very innovative and it was type of a questionnaire which would 35 questions yeah uh, which would reveal things about you that you wouldn't even know uh, it's like right? therapy yeah sort of right under ecstasy yeah yeah probably <laughs> it was strange and like yeah it was interesting mm-hmm. I, i would want to do things like that if i were to interview really? someone right uh, because he got to know a lot more about me mm-hmm. uh, but i didn't i I gave long answers. We had a lot of back and forth, so we, I could only answer ten to fifteen questions. Okay. Turns out, toward that's what he told me towards the end. But he was very happy with me. Yeah. Uh, proceeded me to the next round. Next round was a, a one hour presentation of a technical problem I had solved, okay. followed by five other interviews on the same day. Hmm. Uh, f- five interviews. Two of them were behavioral. Two of them were purely technical. in the technical interviews they straight up asked me to share my screen had a hacker rank uh, uh link and in that link they had a csv file and i had to perform diff- that 10 questions and i had to solve all those 10 questions okay. uh, query the data plot a graph uh, transform the data etc mm-hmm. and uh, i solved like eight of them time got over last round was uh, with a principal architect okay. and he spoke about things that just flew over my head mm-hmm. uh, he was talking about 3 nf bnf bcnf normalizations uh, yeah she, okay. and he was talking about like the 
deepest intricacies mm-hmm. of dynamo db how the architecture works and he was a very like a uh, hold you by your balls mm. kind of a guy mm. you know mm. like completely command the interview mm. kind of guy uh, he completely rolled over me uh, it still went well in my opinion but eventually they went with someone who had more experience right he was laid off from tesla i got to know because i knew i knew someone many people okay. in the company that's how i got to know uh, so they hired someone else other than that i've been ever since december i've been searching for a job Luckily, I had a professor who could offer me something for two months. Right. Uh, other than that, it's been very hard. Right. And uh, from talking to other people, and I've had a lot of friends who have gotten a job in this market. Yeah. And from my experience, all of them had a very good connection with someone, or they converted their internship, or they have been applying to jobs by completely tailoring their resume for each job. Okay. that's my experience i have not been doing that uh, because i want to do purely software development i think my resume already has yeah so those skills you're trying to find a fit rather yeah. than like but that i failed miserably and i'm going to switch gears <laughs> and start doing what everyone right, else right uh, like right now you should probably do that first and then yeah, yeah. okay and now going back like i'm moving around here and there but going back to your startup in bangalore so i think there would be an inflection point there as well where you would have decided that let's do masters in us and let's work there i don't know whether you're long term or short term pla- what what it is and i think that's like that happens as you go on even if i ask someone you wouldn't probably know for sure that what your long term or yeah. short you would have an inclination but aside from that what what was that inflection point that hey let's do that over this so mine was uh, initially i started working in the sense that i so my grades were low in uh, vit vit 8.05 is low because yeah. everybody gets 8.5 yeah so by the time i was in third year i was like i can't i'm definitely not a good student i'll do like i'll go to the industry and work for a bit and then figure figure it out okay but then i got bored after one two years and i was like ah, i'm young i should probably just see how the other side of the world works just this was my this is my probably purpose that just see how the other side of the world works and do what you because it's if you're working if you're in tech it doesn't matter based on geography right but i didn't think of because these things came into play recently like i, I would say two three years yeah. so post covid so that the risk reward analysis that i that was a great it. video bro uh if anyone has not watched it please watch it uh and this is i don't even know the guy that well i watched it and it is everything any rational person uh who is in this situation would think yeah. of and no one is talking about it yeah. you know people whoever is posting on linkedin or whoever is posting on youtube they have a interest in you coming to us yeah, yeah, yeah. they have a hidden interest so they'll sell you the dream okay the second someone is associated with a counseling agency. exactly exactly <laughs> you're fucked uh so listen to this guy watch that video uh it is a very logical breakdown of what you can expect when you come here and just uh whatever you saying make it 10 times worse and come with that those expectations and then you'll be fine right so when you were doing your risk reward what was your like why choose the us is sometimes it's about career growth sometimes it's about money generally it's like one of these three four sometimes it's just to see how the other side of the world works so was there any of these so i'll tell you uh, i decided i want to go for masters when i was in my third year okay and uh, i st- I joined that startup because it was covid and I had nothing to do. Okay. And I I was a decent developer so I knew I, there is someone who needs me. Right. So I just started applying. I had my intentions for going for masters okay. even before okay. I joined that company and uh if I would have told them that I'm going for masters they wouldn't have hired me so I right. didn't tell them, right. right? And then just after a year I was like I have to go. Sorry boys. Right. Kudos. Huh. It was good working with you. uh but they were like gentle people they right. accepted it uh but i had intentions of coming to masters for uh since third year okay mainly because i was confident in my abilities and uh i knew for a fact that competition is less here mm. and my va- my skills would be valued more right 
uh, at the moment. At the moment. That's yeah. what I thought. Which is yeah. 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 But as it turns out, uh, competition here has grown at least three times or five times. Yeah. It has gotten very more, uh, very much competitive here. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say equivalent to India, but you cannot compare it to India because it's apple and oranges. There are mm-hmm. other factors at play here. Right. But uh, yeah, getting a job here has gotten way more complex. And uh, whatever ideas I had, they have changed. Right in right. front of my eyes, and I couldn't do anything about it. Right. So that those were my intentions. I I had the skills. I thought that with those skills, I'll be in a very good position if I go to US because I'll be valued much more. When I when I came here, I wanted to be at the very epicenter of technology because I was decent at it, and I thought that I could work in Silicon Valley, be with the best, hang right. out with the best, right. hang out with the big boys, and learn and build right. something. At the moment, I was building a lot of tools. I still yeah. do in my part. No, you're doing more than I think. The, I mean, you already know this, but you're doing more than the average ninety percent. Maybe. Yeah, but that's that's the thing, right? Uh, up until the callback, it's ninety five percent, or you can argue ninety eight percent. I mean, I would be on board with ninety eight percent. It's ninety eight percent luck because at a certain point, those fifty thousand resumes do look the same, and then yeah. you have to put those filters and yeah. stuff. And only up after the callback is, and the hiring manager is seeing what ten resumes for probably one. So it's like ten is to one. But the recruiter is seeing some fifty thousand is to what ten. Yeah. So I think a lot of noise, a lot of things, value gets lost in the way. So you can't really create that leverage. You can't demonstrate that leverage to the recruiter initially, exactly. which is the fundamental basis of the problem, which yeah. you, you can't solve. Like yeah. which and then. Uh, this same problem is in India because there is a lot of population, right. but. To to counter this, there are campus placements. Campus placements, yeah. Where yeah. companies are bought to the right. college, and right. you uh, you have a shorter competition right. pool. Right. Uh, and and I had when I graduated uh, from my bachelor's in 2022 from VIT, I couldn't sit for pl- campus placement because I was coming for masters, and then VIT doesn't let you do both because right. then you are eating a place for some other student and then you will go just not going to join the company and go for your masters no right. so they don't let you sit for placement right. and hence i had to find a job off campus right so i jo- and it was very difficult finding right. and i could only join a startup uh-huh. even though i had decent skills mm-hmm. so uh, and then i'm facing the same issue again mm-hmm. here not getting fit and also you have the complexity of being like that on paper you're still like a fresher yeah, so exactly. Are, yeah. Yeah. Even That's if you have more thing. experience, then let's say a lot of people will, will have two years of experience on paper, but they're creating one feature per six months, let's say. Yeah. But then even with all of this, it, it's very hard to show that yes. because of yes. the... Uh, uh, I, have, the I have had like recruiters get on call with me from Salesforce and a couple of others. And they've simply told me, even from Rivian, after nine rounds, I got rejected because I don't have enough experience. Experience right. is the biggest, uh, big, uh, and all the people that have gotten jobs in my circle, and this is a data set of 10 to 11 people, right. uh, nine of them have good experience in India from my reputed company. Right. Uh, so that is the one thing that has been dragging me down. Because if you look at my profile, it's decent, man. Right. I, I've tried to do everything I can. Right. A few things where I think I can improve is my application strategy. I think... As I told you, I've had a reverse inflection. Maybe I'm not as motivated as before. So I've not been applying correctly. I've not been altering my resume for each job. Mm -hmm. I've seen people do that. And one of them I know has gotten success with it. I could be reaching out to like cold emailing or cold reach out to thousands of hiring managers who have control over the position. And maybe one of them will click. That's maybe one thing I can be doing. And the third thing is... uh, I, I think I can get some feedback from you on this is uh, be more active on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I know you post a lot. Have you been gaining traction? Because when I was interning at Rivian and I used to post on LinkedIn a lot because I had something right. to show off and a lot of sheeps in the world who would like fall right. for my bait. So uh, <laughs> yeah. I would get more attention. I had like people reaching out to me. Right. I think that's when the recruiter from Tesla reached out to me. Right. 
So I don't know if I think I think that should yeah that it helps. helps yeah a LinkedIn okay. a strong LinkedIn profile and especially if you're contributing to the community per se mm-hmm. then I think that's a bit of a proxy at least on the behavioral front okay. I I would like to believe so but uh, so easy snippet right easy yeah. snippet has this idea that he has this framework and he has this uh, ideology of that learn by creating but I feel like that is true for like. And things are different in India versus in... And you have to define what you want. Like, if you want to get into an Indian startup, your strategy would slightly be different. I think that is very decent for Indian startup. Like, if you're a developer in a high startup in India, let's... I always take example of Zerodha, Reserve, and all of these. And then you want to switch. You are already in that pool. You will always get a call back from yeah. Zerodha, right? Yeah. So, it's it's things like that. But here, I feel it, you, you're still treated at the, as a pool. So, it's more about just enhancing your chances of that surface level of luck. Mm-hmm. So I feel like quantity, I talk a lot about quantity because even with all of it, all of your skills will come only after the callback. For the callback, you have to scratch the surface. It's like just iterations, just sort of dumb luck. Mm-hmm. And uh, whenever somebody gets through with one strategy, they say that that is the holy grail. Like, But it is not. It is just one out of the thousand. And yeah. if that was the strategy, you would have get gotten six callbacks out of the hundred, right? So one worked and they have this confirmation bias. So this I've seen from a lot of people. Oh no, this is the way to go about it. Once you learn it, but I am still going with luck. It is so <laughs> at least get it, it is get luck, the call bro. back. It is luck, it and, is and luck. especially because it's the first job offer. Once you get in, once you're in the market, then that's yeah. a different ballgame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything will change, yeah. and then your LinkedIn game would probably make a lot more sense one year somewhere. But uh, I feel initially, right now, from like for us, once like from university to the first job, it's just getting your step inside the door. That's just going to be. Uh, mass application to to an extent. I, I think uh, internships are easier to get because uh, uh, the job market doesn't directly translate to internship market companies. Yeah, they can give you an internship and not yeah, give you. Yeah, yeah. So companies are always gonna get have interns yeah. because that's low low paying labor. Right. A B, it's more of a marketing thing. Right. Second, they have to have an internship program. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For students to be interested in, and for the top yeah. talent to get attracted to the company, they need to have a program. Yeah. Thirdly, uh, so and then they don't ask you DSA and all that bullshit. Right. Right. Okay. So it's a very good way to get in, and then if you have a company unlike me who who tends to who has like a you know it's not. Cutthroat and the company is not right. dying and they have right. stable. They have a program and they they are they convert x number of interns right. to full time employees. So it's a very good way. It's the best way to get into the industry. Right. If you don't get in that way, you are basically facing a tsunami and then you have right. to fight that tsunami to get a job, right. which I'm currently in. Right. And I think from an interview perspective, internships are much easier than a full time. But from getting a callback perspective, I feel full time for three plus years is easier. I, yeah, I then agree. comes internship. Then comes entry level positions for freshers is the worst. Like yes. zero to two, I would say that is the worst. And then internships are slightly like easier than that. But I think three plus years, I think I am seeing a sort of an increment in the callback. Yes, you're right. You're right. Yeah. because it's just simple math, right? The one thirty k people who are coming in, I'm pretty sure. Like if I have to throw one thirty. Let's say thirty k is uh, undergrad, and I'm doing guesstimates here. I don't have data, but hundred k is masters, right? So out of that hundred k, I'm pretty sure eighty to ninety k will be in the zero to two years pool. Yeah, so it's just yeah. that the supply demand is maybe yeah. yeah. So so it's fucked. So I'm in the worst yeah, possible worst pool. Venn diagram you're subsection worst, yes. whatever. So and you're in tech as well, right? Because yeah. industrial and construction. Oh, yeah. Con- yeah, yeah, it's better than right now. As squeezed yeah. as. Yeah. But uh, good thing we have this on record before before your. <laughs> win so Maybe, we'll yeah. have, <laughs> we'll, I, I, I'll, I'll look back to yeah, this one. we'll catch up once uh, yeah, sure, once, things are, once the tsunami is over Hopefully. but uh, thank you so much for your time right, Superb insights but yes 